Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Lame Book Club podcast. My name is Melissa. I'm Ellie. And we're back with our tandem fandom. This week, it's going to be Empire of Storms, chapters 37 through 51, and just two measly chapters of Tower of Dawn, chapters 36 and 37. So it'll be a you good know, one, folks. I'm liking Tower of Dawn, though. As we go through I it, know. I think I said it, and I, I'm realizing, like, why was I such a butt? This book was really good. I think I just you know had what? so many assumptions it was good. about kale <laughs> it was good and i agree with you i am enjoying it more this time around than i was the first but i still like empire of storms better like com- if yeah. you compare the two to me empire of storms is just better but it's better for sure but tower of dawn was not bad and honestly no. me ranking it so low when i did my reel about like my favorite sjm books i I take it back. I might have to look at things again. I don't know. I don't know. I I mean, I disagree. um, Wearing your shirt. Yes, I am. I'm wearing my subject. Yes, my summer court. Yeah, uh, treasure hunt shirt from the Bean Workshop. Yes, I am. Big fan. Except I am not wearing my green checkered shorts. I know I said I was going to, but alas, they are in the wash. So I think you could have told us all you were, and I don't think anyone would have been like proven. I was nervous to say that because I thought you would have been like, show me, I want to see them together. Uh, and then I would have so to been like, I well, do. I actually just lied to you on the internet. So, <laughs> so I just decided to come out and say that I wasn't yeah. wearing them. Well, that's a <laughs> but cute But thanks shirt. for making um, me. Thanks. I'll plug that now. <laughs> Guys, if you want to, like Melissa, match your books and rep the fun things that we all read. Um, head to the Bean Workshop. You can use the code Lame Book Club Pod for 10% off, or you can go to our Instagram. There is a link in our bio where you can click, and your 10% will already be applied. So yes, happy yes, yes. shopping. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't already listened to our Hot Goss episode from this last week, do so. It was a fun one, and I have to admit, I gave this one to Ellie. So we are honestly between the three, it, we're just kind of at a draw. Um, we were at a draw. <laughs> we couldn't agree on the first one. Ellie, I won the second one, and Ellie won the third one. So, yeah, who knows? But um, it's Ellie v. Melissa Reckless. It's our last installment of the courtroom. Um, honestly, because of that, I feel like maybe we really should hand it over to you guys overall. Like based on listening to all of them, who do you think had the best case for all three books? Mm-hmm. Um, let us know in the comments um, on YouTube, on Instagram. DM us, whatevs, yeah. however you and while you're feel at it, so like inclined. And subscribe and yes. <laughs> leave us a review on Apple. Um, actually, our one year is coming up, our one year anniversary. It is. And so that's if you want to get us a gift, please leave us a review <laughs> on Apple Podcasts. A nice one. Yes. I mean it. Actually, that, oh my God, I thought you were going to like legit say send us something. No, that would be the best gift ever if you guys could leave us a written review on Apple Podcasts. That, yeah. We'll read them. Amazing. We will. It'll be great. It's been great for everybody, I think. Yes. Yes. So that would be the best present ever. And I love presents. So do it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Um, Okay. I was going to say something. Go for it. You can go first. What were you going to say? Is it a personal thing? It is absolutely a personal thing. (laughs) Oh, good. Mine too. So I will go first. Excellent. I've. In doing the podcast, I think we should reflect after it's been nearly a year. We'll maybe do like a fun anniversary maybe. episode. I don't know. We'll have to think about that. But we're spitballing live, so the Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but after a year of podcasting, I have to sometimes like reflect from where we've come, how oh far my. we've how far we've gone. You know, it's been really neat to see the growth mm-hmm. and everything. And when you do something like that, you start to look at yourself. And compare what you look like in each Instagram short that you post. And I have found something so, so true about myself, specifically to this last hot goss episode. This is where like my revelation happened. I'm not an autumn. And (laughs) Melissa was like, you got to do the color theory. And so I took all these tests. I was so secure and like, I'm an autumn. Like I'm an autumn. I have the dark hair. I have like a darker, like, I don't know. Of complexion of being white, yeah, more tan, yeah. I guess. Well, I you're also Taiwan ease. Yeah, Taiwan ease. 
Thank you. You're only half white is what I'm trying to get at. I am yeah. full white. I've so that's a little different. <laughs> but so I'm like, I'm an autumn. And boy, oh boy, I went full <laughs> autumn last episode. And I was looking at myself like I look sallow. I look sick. Something's you know what's so funny? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. I did not feel like you looked like that when we were recording. But now that you mention it, comparing to even just looking at you right mm -hmm. now, you looked a lot Something's more washed different. out. Yes. You looked a lot more washed out last episode yes. than you do this yes. one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so then I started going back to the other shorts and being like, well, what looked good on me? Because am yeah. I just ugly? Is that the answer? <laughs> no. And it turns out. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I think I am a summer believe it or not, mm. because I saw a picture where like my lips, I had like a lighter um, lipstick yeah. on, like a more peachy. I did more peachy blush and I had like a pink shirt on. I was glowing. Then I did I one glowing. where I had like a bright blue shirt on, like bright colors, like yeah. almost obnoxious. And my skin was glowing. And I'm like, I'm I'm a bright color summer. You know what? And so that's this what works, I say. This works perfectly <laughs> with your mojo. Um, and to yeah, let everyone in on the scoop of the mojo, Ellie gosh two times the last <laughs> the last couple times that we've gotten together in person um mm -hmm. she's just been talking about how she's like yeah melissa because backstory ellie's always been a neutral girly like mm -hmm. for the most part always been like blacks and the safe colors Tans, and which is beige, fine yeah white. yeah totally fine like i myself am like that as well for the most part but uh <laughs> she's been talking about how she's like been introducing more color into her wardrobe and she's been calling it her mojo so <laughs> I, anytime I've seen anything, I'm like, Ellie, this fits your mojo. And how honestly perfect is it that you find out it's that perfect. you are not in fact an autumn, but really a summer. It just works with the mojo. It's perfect. <laughs> and if I'm not a summer, you guys, if you're like a pro color theorist, please help a girl. I don't know I, what's happening. I do I'm go through newly. <gasps> Maybe we should see if they could sponsor us. I, I'll plug them anyways. <laughs> I do rent clothes from newly and I am a diehard fan of that whole process. Maybe something's wrong with it that I don't know about, but don't bring it to my attention. I love it. <laughs> because so I've been she's a renting loyal colorful fan. Clothes. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, yeah. what's your thing? Oh, it actually, ironically, is clothing related as well. I am very excited because I also... I too, hence the shirt, have been experiencing my mojo this last year and buying more colors. Um, nice. I can't remember. It's so funny that I was the one who told you to do that. I can't remember. I think I'm I'm a summer as well, but I really can't remember what. I have to go back and redo it, like mm -hmm. what my actual color things are. Um, but I just got the most fun light blue checkered pants on, Am on Amazon of all places Ooh. that have ties going up the sides up until like uh -huh. my like lower thigh I want to say so there's like okay. I don't know I'm is guessing it bare four... skin or does it like close the, the so, material yeah, so together it, it, the top they're like bow ties and they close the material together but then in between them it's like kind of opens a little bit so like it's certainly not risque at all because of where the bow ties like mm -hmm. stop but even they're like thinner material pants and then mm -hmm. they're wide leg as well so then there's just a little bit of like a slit going down the leg too in between mm. the bow ties they look so cute on the pictures and i looked through a lot of reviews and reviews of like normal people wearing them with pictures and they seem to also look cute in person so i am optimistic and very excited hey. to get them <laughs> you've heard it here um i'm not like a fashion girl but man oh man I don't know where I'm going with that. Will you send me the link for those pants? I think I was going to sure be like, will. maybe we should like post an Amazon because we have an affiliate link for Amazon. Maybe we should post like the pants you got or we're talking about. Uh, hey. But then I kind of feel like we're talking about it feels books. feels random. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you guys let us know if you want to yeah. see a, a list of clothes we'd wear. It's <laughs> It would be so, so random. Place. Yeah, but I'm... But I'll I, do it. Well, and I almost exclusively shop for my clothes on Amazon purely because of the convenience of it. So mm -hmm. I have, if, if you guys want, again, like Ellie said, I am by no means like a fashionista, but I do feel like I do my best to be trendy. And if I'm wearing something, there's a 50, 50 chance that it's either from Amazon or old Navy. So half of my clothing, I can link on um, whatever. It doesn't matter. I feel even stupid offering that because I feel like such an impo like imposter syndrome, even saying it, but 
I'm happy to oblige if anyone I don't is feel curious. Like this is more oblige. I, here's my heart behind this. I'm not trying to be an influencer. That's I'm trying so to true. talk to my friends about do you want the link for the tank tops I got? <laughs> I guess that's, that's true. literally all that is. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. If you want the links, I got you. Yeah. And that's that. Let's do our yep. uh, book book club. <laughs> yes. Yes. So like, subscribe, follow us, leave a review, all the things. Um, let's jump on in. Ellie, are you ready? Yes. All right. Also, the good news, too, is there is very little flip flopping. We're just going to go straight through Empire of Storms and then do the two, last two chapters of Tower Dawn at the end. So jumping nice. in to Empire of Storms, um, chapter 37, if you remember, we left off last episode of with Lysandra <laughs> fighting the sea wyverns. So Adian is watching the sea wyverns approach Lysandra, and he realizes that these three are three times the size of Lysandra in Sea Dragon for him. He watches Lysandra trick one of the wyvern bulls into following her towards the ship. She crashes into the ship, and the bull following her is then impaled on one of the ship's beams. The next bull she leads towards Dorian. When the wyvern chasing Lysandra gets within range, Dorian free freezes it and then lets Rolf men use a catapult to hit it with a boulder, shattering its frozen body. I remember Oof. reading that one, and I was like, yes. <laughs> like, I don't know. Where impaling have we seen it on that on screen before? On so many things. Someone getting yeah. frozen and then them using like a boulder to shatter. Like, to, like it's just, them. But like where? It's Give classic. Specific. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it happens about 84 times in Game of Thrones. Um, I was thinking that too, but I can't remember that actually being a thing. I am, don't, you know I'm the worst at memory recall. So mm -hmm. I could okay. absolutely know like a million examples of when that's happened. But the second you ask me to give you one, I, my mind goes blank. <laughs> Does a Marvel character have ice? Um, Bobby you from X Men are more That's of the I Marvel of immediately. Yeah, you're more of the Marvel girl than I am. So <laughs> it's everything in me to not do a Marvel podcast. <laughs> I if just need to put that on the air. <laughs> if Spider Man doesn't have the power, uh, there's a good chance I don't know about it. So <laughs> um, I every day I wake up and I just kind of like. Oh, I really want to do that, but all right. Well, you'd have to find another Sullivan. friend because I would be a really bad co-host on that one. <laughs> I'll just, just tell you the yourself. things, and you just listen. Oh, okay. Can you imagine me doing a podcast on my own? You <laughs> oh, are the yin you. to my yang. Oh, I could literally. Oh man. All right. Well, moving forward to keep us on track here. Um, when the next wyvern attacks, Lysandra flees towards the chain, and as the wyvern leaps into the air, Adian aims the fire lances and fires. Uh, what is it? Butunch. There we go. Killing it. <laughs> like, that was so anticlimactic. Uh, but whatever. Lysandra collapses on the beach. Aelin and the cadre join her, and Aelin apologizes for putting her in such danger. As Lysandra st struggles to recover, Adian tells her that he plans to marry her whenever she will have him. When she returns to human form, Gavriel watches as Adian scoops her into his arms and carries her to safety. Uh, Rolf. I don't I love Adian. But I oh, loved thank, that scene. Thank goodness. I was honestly trying to move past it so fast because I was going to accept zero criticism from you on that. <laughs> but no, we can talk so about cute. it now that I know that you're pro that scene. It was so scene. cute. It was so cute. Look, Adian's, I'm, I'm not by any means like, I hate him. I it don't feels love like him, it. but I think it's just <laughs> his, his storyline with the father, like with Gavriel, because yeah. I don't care for that. And that's it. I guess. Yeah, like that did not that. interest me. And then how how much emphasis was being placed on it and then his reaction, which I guess maybe rightfully so, I don't know. But he just I didn't care for that. But I him and the romance and like his sacrifice for Terrison, big fan. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Glad we cleared that up, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Rolf, Rowan, and Aelin debrief after the battle. Rolf tells Aelin that he received the magic tattoos on his hand when he was 16 and was enslaved aboard another pirate ship. He got the tattoos in a bargain with a man he met on an island after the ship was wrecked. He wanted to be a pirate lord, and the man promised that he would be, but he later discovered that the price of this wish was the life of his mother and sister, both of whom died when they took their own boat out to try and find Rolf. After the meeting, Aelin and Rowan discuss Deanna's role in the events to come, unsettled by the goddess's desire to use Aelin as a conduit for power. Aelin and Rowan reaffirm their feelings for each other and consummate their relationship 
on the beach and i want to say it was thrice consummated something like that <laughs> um Aelin finally tells everyone that the amulet of orinth is the third word key she then takes out the mangled eye of elena and tells dorian that he should meet his ancestor she describes her past meetings with Elena and Br Brannon and explains her trickery in sending Lorcan away with the fake word key in hopes that he will return with the other two. She also stresses the importance of finding the lock. She takes out two old books and begins a ritual to summon Elena's spirit. When Elena appears, she confesses that her mother is Mala Firebringer, who sacrificed her mortal body to forge the lock in order to help defeat Erewhon. Elena begs them to find the lock in the stone marshes, revealing that it was left in a city that has since vanished underwater. I know I said this. I don't even remember how many episodes ago it was when we talk about when Brandon appeared and told her about the lock. You guys, I am so cynical. I still at this point was like, man, this trickery is going deep. They're both in on it. <laughs> Something is wrong with this lock. And I'm like... I still didn't buy it. I still did not believe it. And I cannot, like, looking back, I cannot believe how cynical I was. But it's just how I read, and I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> um, I think that I genuinely was still just annoyed with yet another... Yeah. I mean, it's not another, but resurfacing the side quest that she needs to yeah. make. And I'm like, they're already doing a lot. I feel like <laughs> that could have been the end of the task list, but... I'm not Sarah, yeah. and Sarah obviously did so well with Throne of Glass series, so <laughs> continue on. <laughs> Elena leaves, and Aelin hatches a plan for Rolf to take half of his fleet, rally the split between defending the... I'm not even... Okay, before I say this, I want to point out that on our Mycenians. Discord, we've had... No, the Archipelago. Arch oh! <laughs> I don't even remember now how to say it. And I'm laughing because we've had a whole conversation on our discord with multiple people about how I was saying it actually, like I said I was wrong, but I was actually like so, so close. And then how it's maddening to so many people, how I cannot get it right. And to those people, I just want to let you know that I am in the same boat as you. I genuinely cannot understand how I say it different every single time and how my mind does not comprehend. I've Googled the pronunciation of it. My mind cannot remember it. The letters do not make sense and I read with my eyes. So whatever. Defending that and sailing to Ailway to find the lock. They sail away and three days into their journey they see a wyvern. Aelin mm -hmm. and Dorian stop the troops from shooting it and watch as Manon falls off of Braxos and into the ocean. Ali, switching gears a little bit here, still within Empire Storms, but back to my girl, Alid. Alid watches as Lorcan Alid. performs, me too, uh, his sword throwing act and feels jealous of the women ogling him. I fully understand, Alid. I too would be ogling if I was a random woman in the crowd. <sighs> Lorcan asks why she does not become in intimate with any guy of the men who clearly admire her and a lead admits to him that she's a virgin before their conversation can continue the group is attacked by ilkin which are demonic winged creatures with poisonous claws lorkin tells a lead to hide and confronts the ilkin the creatures ask about a lead using her real name and this moment makes lorkin aware of her lie but he claims that there is no one in the group who matches her description the ilkin say that they are hungry Alid hides until she cannot hear the screaming anymore. When she comes out of her hiding spot, Lorcan chides her for moving so conspicu conspicuously and angrily tells her that he knows her true identity. He knows her uncle is Erewhon's right hand and she is his prized possession, a lady of high regard. Alid replies that she is no one's possession. That's right, girl. <laughs> and tells him that she would rather die than go back to Morath. Softened by her resolve, he asks what she carries. All Alid will say is that it's an item or the item is a gift for Selena Sardothian. Alid tells Lorcan the truth of her uncle's treachery, that he usurped her father's title and subsequently imprisoned Alid, keeping her chained and enslaved in Morath. Lorcan reveals his own past, that he was born to unwed parents in the streets of Dornell and later swore a blood oath to Maeve. He still honors his oath, although he knows that she may kill him for coming to Aurelia on his own accord. Manon wakes in screaming pain aboard the ship. Aelin tells her that they pulled 
oh, I'm sorry, uh, all the iron shavings out of her abdominal wounds. Manon is now their prisoner, and Abraxas is safe aboard the ship as well, but Aelin threatens to kill her if she tries to hurt anyone. When Aelin leaves, Dorian goes to Manon's cabin and explains how they saved her. He has figured out that Manon's grandmother was the one who attacked her. Manon asks about a lead, a lead, but Dorian doesn't know who she is. Manon also asks about the 13, but Dorian hasn't heard any news as they have been aboard the ship for over a week sailing south. Manon tells Dorian that if he can find the 13, she will join their cause. And then she asks him to tell Aelin that Elite is alive and looking for her. I love okay. that. We need to pause. It's been <laughs> a pausing. heavy like summary, and we need to pause and just recap a lot of this real quick. <laughs> Please. Number one, Lorcan and Elite. Okay, this is <gasps> so dumb, but I'm sure you don't know the reference that I'm about to say, but if any of you do, let me know. I have never in my life found this man attractive until exactly this movie. Have you seen Inkheart? Nope. You're so right. I don't okay. know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, Paul Bettany. Um, do you know who he is? He's nope, the guy but I'm who plays Vision up. in Marvel. Ew. Yeah. Okay. He's not cute. Like, no, yeah. Normally. But in Inkar, <laughs> he has this like shirtless scene where he is rippling abs and he's like twisting the fire. That- have you- do you see it? Okay. Are you looking literally, at that scene? Yes. And I'm going to have Zeke plug a picture of this yes, right here. yes please <laughs> i was like who and as a kid i don't even know and then when i'm reading this like lorkin like being ogled by the women and Elid getting jealous that is the picture that played in my mind and i was like <laughs> rightfully so i'd be jealous too the best part is i'm looking at this picture right now and i'm i mean if you guys are it's watching not it, cute. You see it i watched it, it is, recently it's not like, good it's not yeah. cute. <laughs> this isn't this isn't a great <laughs> like, picture either young 13 year old me who's maybe this... never seen like a guy with a six foot <laughs> i don't my first exposure i was like wow <laughs> either this picture is just really low quality or he still doesn't have a six pack but i you know maybe all good he doesn't, i don't know he's just he's I like blind what I, like. <laughs> I don't know guys i don't know so then when he appears as vision in marvel i was like oh yikes <laughs> He's blue. A jump scare. <laughs> red. <laughs> no, he's like red. <laughs> oh, so man. So that. Um, number two, the tension between Manon oh, and Dorian. Because you already kind of no. felt it when, like, she visited him for the, or when they met for the first time. And she was like, hello, princeling. And he was like, hello, witchling. And then the Valg in him, like, got scared of her. And so he's felt, mm. like, this chemistry. But this is the first time, right, since then that they're... Wait, I, I I'm trying to remember. No, I think it might be the last well, castle. It's e- was that before yeah. or after? No, it was before the glass castle. She saved him. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, saved yeah, yeah. Him. No, no, no. I meant before they met in the forest. But you're right, that was after because that was earlier in Queen yeah. of Shadows that they met in the right. forest. But um, this is like the first time they have like a time to talk, like for real, with no I'm demon interrupting. Go ahead. I'm gonna say something um, that might get everyone into a little tizzy uh, I, this scene like didn't i didn't really care that much like i i like manon and i like dorian but like the tension wasn't there for me and i i was excited about him finally moving on good lord if i hear about sorsha one more time i'm gonna lose it so i was excited about that but i it just it didn't do it for me the way that Elite and Lorcan are doing it for me. And when I tell you that mm. I was surprised about that, I mean it. <laughs> I like Lorcan sucks when you first meet him. So I was not mm-hmm. at all expecting to be even remotely interested in any of his storyline. But here we are. Not only am I interested in it, I am into it. And I know that <laughs> it's mostly because of Elite. But yeah. oh man. That that scene did it for me, and I did not picture Paul, whatever his name is, and Bettany. Bettany. I almost said Bill Blemmy because I couldn't remember. <laughs> did not Paul picture Blemmy Vision. Was not there for me. <laughs> he looks like a Blemmy if you see the picture. I don't. I he can't explain it. Does look like a Blemmy. Oh, poor Paul. Oh. Uh, anyways, Paul E.B. Now, um, Lorcan turned into Henry Cavill after that. Oof. For me. I can't. No, he wasn't Henry Cavill. Adian and Rowan both are Henry Cavill as the Witcher, and I've said that before, and that All still rings true. All were Henry Cavill for me. <laughs> no. Elite was Henry Cavill. Manon was Henry Cavill. 
No, no, no. But Lorcan was like, the only way I can explain it right now is emo Henry Henry Cavill. But like in my mind, <laughs> so he's Henry still, Cavill. <laughs> no, I was. That's what I was gonna say. Like in my mind, it doesn't look like Henry Cavill. His yeah. face, but he has the long Witcher wig like he did, except it's oh. black, and he his body looks like Henry Cavill, but his face doesn't. Yeah, I actually totally agree with you, but I think it's because I've seen fan art. And that's yeah, what's and I think subconsciously that's... popping into my head. Agreed. Um, but yeah, I loved, really quick before we moved on, I loved that all of this is happening. Manon's like, doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know where her the 13 are. Like, okay, yeah, sure. She, they say Abraxos is up on the top of the ship, but like mm-hmm. she can't, con- I don't know. And she still is like, tell Aelin that Man- Il- Elite is alive and looking for her. Like, mm-hmm. she's just... Her character so development honorable. has come so far, and it's so really fun to read has. about. Yes. Um, All right. A storm threatens a group as they... Oh, we're back. Sorry. We're back to Elite and Lorcan. A storm threatens their group as they come to a town, so Elite and Lorcan travel from, a ta- from tavern to tavern, seeking news of the conflict with Erewhon. They hear about Rifthold's destruction, Dorian's ousting as king, and the rumors of Aelin's travel plans. Some believe that she will go to Terrison, while others think that she'll go to Aelway. Learning that two of the other group members turn them into the town's garrison guards, Elite and Lorcan flee. They steal a boat from a man, promising to let him live, but Lorcan later kills him and throws him overboard, upsetting Elite. I love yeah, everything that's about to happen. Do it. <laughs> no, but like this whole, what we're all about to go into, mm-hmm. chef's kiss from me. <clears throat> okay. Lorcan calls Elite naive for thinking that the man would not have betrayed them agreed Lorcan, but also didn't have to kill him he also accuses her of hypocrisy for judging his actions while she is seeking selena sardathian who is an assassin his ang- in his anger he also reveals that selena and aelin are the same person telling her that the queen she is seeking is also a murderer i want to s- pause for a second what did mm-hmm. you in that moment were you mad that he told her or were you like like I, I'm trying to remember. Like you I wanted can... a grand reveal, and then he yeah. just kind of blew it for you. I, yeah, yes, I think and I was tr- frustrated, but like not at him. I think I was just like, dang, not how I would have made that play out. But I'm trying to remember on. if I like what I felt in the beginning or like when I mm-hmm. first read that, and I can't remember. But now, like looking back, part of me is like, I know he just said it because he was angry, but in the grand scheme of things, like he did the girl a favor because yeah, she thought she, she was for looking two people. for two yeah, I know. And like, I'm sure she would have figured it out eventually, but like mm-hmm. now she doesn't have to go into it looking like she doesn't know what she's talking about. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, Ali tells Lorcan that his hatred for, of her reveals his loneliness. Suddenly the word keystone in Ali's pocket comes to life, causing Lorcan to realize that the word key Aelin had given him is fake. He says that he will continue on with Elid to Aelway, where they hope to find Aelin, stating that he now has business with her as well. well Aelin timed. wakes up from a <laughs> yeah, I know. Aelin wakes up from a nightmare. Her power is overflowing and burning her clothes off. Rowan then calms her down. They discuss Aelin's dream of making a new court, hinting at her desire to marry Rowan. In the night, Dorian visits Manon, and they discuss the yielding, the process by which a witch can destroy a large area with magic at the cost of her life. Manon asks him to remove her chains, feeling empathy for the years that Alid spent chained in Morath. Dorian says that she must ask Aelin to unchain her. The two of them flirt, but Dorian leaves before anything more could happen. When Adian delivers Manon's breakfast, he smells Lor- Dorian's scent in her cabin and questions Dorian's decision to flirt with her. But Lysandra is glad that Dorian can move on from the trauma of losing Sorsha. Pause here. Pause. <sighs> the fact that Faye can smell, I know. like, smell emotions, Other people. smell matings, smell I don't flirting. think they can smell emotions. They can just smell people. I don't know. They constantly say, like, oh, I smell fear on you. Like things oh, like that. You're so right. But that but they're not smelling the emotion, they're smelling the body's reaction to that sure. feeling. But still, I it off put it's un- unsettling to me. I don't like that. I don't I would wanna walk in a room and have somebody <laughs> read me like a book based on how I smell. More more so, what if I smelled bad? I was and then just, it's literally, just like their face is like mm, and you know that that's you. I was literally <laughs> just about to say 
and I am, I don't even know why I'm saying this. I am so outing myself on the entire internet, but I work from home and it's not that I'm not hygienic, but like, I don't, sometimes I don't leave my house all week, depending on what my week and my plans are. And it hasn't, because I don't have to go anywhere for work. And sometimes I'll realize later in the afternoon, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put deodorant on this morning. And the only reason I can tell is because I can smell myself. Good mm-hmm. Lord. If someone, if I was married to a fae, I would be so embarrassed all of the time, mm-hmm. all of the time, because if I could I smell think- it as a, like, <laughs> What's worse is imagine being a fae and like you have to smell like I, know. I personally take it like I actually take it personally when someone smells around me like I think that they do it to me on purpose <laughs> and so I cannot imagine having the power of 40 men in my very clutches and having someone offend me that way I don't know how I'd react I think I'd be so mad poorly I can tell you right now poorly is how you would react <laughs> but I also cannot believe, and I know I literally just said that, I cannot believe, Ellie, that we are still talking about this chick. I cannot get over it. Sorsha? Yes. You know what? I actually am going to cede this point and give it to you. I While she died in a very heinous way, yes. and to anyone that would be traumatic in real life if that happened, oh my gosh, oh my gosh never yeah. forget that for the rest of your life. But for the sake of the writing and the sake of this book, a lot of people have died a lot of different ways and mm-hmm. nobody's really brought them up. So the fact that Sorsha really wasn't a like real love, if we're honest, being honest with ourselves, and if Dorian's being honest with himself, like yeah. Aelin was, or Selena was his lost love and Sorsha was his rebound. So the yes. fact that he's like, oh, Sorsha, like in mourning, I think if Sarah really wanted to put that in, she should have had Sorsha appear in freaking assassin's blade and ride with the rest of the friend group the entire time and build a huge backstory for her so that it was a major loss for us too and that we're true. like man we can't believe he lost her either not true. a half book and then gone not even half a book and i know people are gonna say oh he only dated selena for a week you're not wrong they literally dated for a week but he was pining after her mm-hmm. for way longer mm-hmm. he was with sorsha for like two maybe and they three. understood each other a and lot it was started more. their chemistry was in- intense and you're talking about aelin right now right not Sorsha. yeah yeah selena. okay think i'm mm-hmm. like oh yeah sorry selena yes mm-hmm. agreed like the way he talked about selena not only when they were together but even afterwards mm-hmm. so much more romantic than he ever once spoke about sorsha like i really the biggest impact she had on him was dying and i Again, like you said, totally understand that. But my goodness, if she, if Sarah really wanted to pull emotion from us and wanted us to feel for Dorian, she really should have been referencing his feelings for um, Selena slash Aelin, mm-hmm. not Sorsha. Because like every time Sorsha gets brought up, and I, I physically do it, if you're watching this, you can see it. I roll my eyes so hard and it really lost a lot of maybe even like depth for his character to me mm-hmm. because... It just was like, I, oh my so gosh, how, I literally... So how would you, I mean, we're not going to do a full, like, shut the fanfic up session right now, but how would you have written this differently if you wanted <sighs> that impact? Like, would you change the character? Because I have an idea. I I have two I don't ideas, know. actually. I don't know, but I think we should <laughs> save that for a shut the fanfic up episode, because I think that could be good. I just want to say it, though. Okay. So, okay. sorry. I can dive I, into it more on in an episode, but I do yeah. want to... I have three ideas now. One, if in this book, rather than Dorian and Sorsha coming together and building this relationship, if Sarah would have written Holland in and his brother, Dorian's brother, and yeah. having a change of character where actually you know, I've been like looking up to you and I, I don't want to be this person. I want to change and growing his mm. character a little bit and then the king killing him. Second option, Ooh. his mother, because she doesn't really make a comeback in this story. And so him losing his mother, who was a source of like comfort to him, if she would have like talked about, oh, you know, flashbacks of Dorian being raised and how his mother was a sense of peace for him. And then his father killed her in front of him. Also something like it doesn't have to be a lover. You could easily be traumatized by anything and just be like, I can't consider any relationship right now because yeah. I'm in so much pain. But then yeah. if you did want it to be a lover, he could have 
like put his heart out on the line for Selena even, and then lost her to Kale maybe again, or even lost her to Doranelle or what, you know, uh, the, what this, the other Island when she uh, left and been like, I'll never see oh, her yeah, again. Yeah. I'm broken. And then when she comes back realizing like Kale that she fell in love with Rowan. And so he's crushed that way too. And then he's yeah. not getting over her. So I feel yeah. like those three options would have been more believable to me. than all, Literally Sorsha. all of them. Literally mm-hmm. all of them would have been more impactful. I couldn't agree more. Um, Sticking back to the story, though, Dorian asks yep. Aelin to unchain Manon, and although she's uncertain of her intentions and angry at Manon for leaving a lead in Oakwald, just like Ellie was, <laughs> she <laughs> agrees to unchain Manon's legs. In exchange, she demands that Manon share information about Morath and about Erewhon's plans. They arrive at Manon's cabin, and on a- as Aelin introduces Fenris to guard Manon, Manon says that he is not actually Fenris. Erewhon's bloodhound shifts back into her original form, leaving the illusion of Fenris behind, though she admits that Fenris is still alive elsewhere on the ship. The group fights the bloodhound, who taunts Manon with news of Astrin's torture and death. Fenris shoots the bloodhound, and Manon almost kills it before Dorian uses his magical invisible hands to finish the job. The Ilkin approach the ship, and before the group can kill them all one reveals to Aelin that Erewhon knows that she carries a word key and knows of her location and plans this whole scene like my jaw was on the floor because I remember the bloodhound with Manon Mm -hmm. like back in the forest and and everything that's essentially how she I mean not essentially that is how she ended up on the ship but I was not see I did not see that coming like yeah like yeah here's Fenris I would have been I was like waiting I'm like why is this getting weird and then I was like like literally jaw on the floor I was like I cannot Mm -hmm. believe that this is happening right now (laughs) I love this part it was crazy yeah in the aftermath of the fight with the Ilkin the group uses healing magic to patch each other up Aelin heals Fenris even though he claims that he can heal himself while she heals him she asks him how he can how he came to serve Maeve he tells her that he and his twin Connell were the sons of a noble family in Wendland and went to Doranel, a oh, Wendland. That was the other country. Wendland. Yes. Connet. Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they went to Doranel to seek adventure, which led Connell to serving Maeve and Fenris following just so he could protect him. Maeve knows that Fenris hates the bond. So she sent him with Gavriel to torture him with a taste of freedom. Maeve, man, she is sadistic. Love to hate her. <laughs> yeah, we do. Gavriel joined Maeve because he was the third son of his noble family and had no other way to gain honor. He doesn't hate the bond, but he almost left to be with Adian's mother. Adian is shocked by this, especially when Gavriel tells him that he would have done anything to keep his mother safe. Dorian and Manon discuss the strategies of killing versus torture, as Dorian killed the bloodhound quickly and humanely. Manon then reveals the truth of her iron teeth cro- and slash Croshan heritage. Aelin and Manon greet each other as queens, the queen of Terrison and the queen of the... Oh, sorry. You say Croshan. I say Crokin. Why did I, I say surprised. that wrong? But you know what? Um, Daniel said Crokin, and I think that's a happy medium for both of us. That might be. I'm still saying Crokin. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, the group questions Maeve's intentions, and Fenris states that, quote, nameless is her price to indicate that she cannot be bought. This phrase jars Aelin because Baba Yellowleg said the same thing to her before Aelin killed her. This causes Aelin to ask Manon if witches can see the future, and she replies that some, like Baba Yellowlegs, can. Aelin goes to her room and tells Rowan that she wants to talk to Lysandra. They then realize that Eowe is burning. Okay. Eowe burning was so political for me. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's the point. I actually, I know, but I, I did not even consider <laughs> yeah. the fact that Sarah would write in, like, politics into this. Like, not mm. literal, like, our world politics, yeah. but, like, the idea that, oh, you can't even trust Aelin because she's causing Elway to burn, so. Mm. Mm, and she wasn't, but now everybody's yeah. thinking she did, so nobody wants to side with her, so now she's not going to get this army to defeat people. And I'm like, the lying, yeah. the cheating I just didn't even consider this. Like, it's like either you win or you lose on the battlefield, not the idea of turning your people away from you because you can't defend yourself. 
Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. It was such good writing. My goodness. It was. Sarah Janet, you have done it again. Done it again. (laughs) Ali doesn't speak to Lorcan for three days, only breaking her silence to tell him that she needs none other than menstrual products. (laughs) They stop at an. (laughs) I know that you, like, hate when books write this in. I hate it. How did you feel? I don't hate when books write this in. I Mm -hmm. hate when books talk about contraceptives and make it like a for what it like a potion mm-hmm. or like uh what are the what's the other word that they use all the time um what helly help me a tonic they, a tonic thank you like mm-hmm. i'm like this is clearly a made-up world a made-up like there's magic systems in this there's vampires and werewolves and fey and like, like th- this is clearly not real we do not need to write in the fact that like in the middle of a scene they're like oh, is this okay? It's like, don't worry, I'm on the tonic. Like, that is so uncomfortable and so weird. Just, let's just assume that we, they know about birth control or it's just not a problem. Like, it, to me, it's not bad writing if we just don't add that in. Like, yeah, I was it gonna just say, makes well, it weirdly... Would you weirdly... rather them just say like, no, I'm on birth control, but I see that you're no. saying don't say anything. Just don't even Just think. let's exactly. all assume yeah. that like, you know. I... <laughs> but then what if like people assume that I mean, maybe there's like a, a I'm, I'm forgetting the word, like a, stan- a standard where so many authors have written that in now that you assume if you don't hear that, that you think that the pregnancy trope is coming. Do okay, you think then let, that could like, be playing a thing? Who cares? Let them think that and then it doesn't happen. <laughs> Like, well, so that is such a weird niche thing to be so upset about. I like, know. Who cares? I, I care never so met much. Anyone that's ever like read over that again and been like, gross like i've it never is... even had this conversation okay? you have met someone have actually because i am here <laughs> i care so much about it for no reason and i can't well, even explain let's why let's bring this back to a lead so she yeah. starts her period and this yep. is actually maybe the first time that i've read this on page of like a woman starting her period and then being like i don't have anything to take care of this <laughs> odd very odd but then also a very sensitive and sweet side of Lorcan because he rips well, up his not, shirt no no he doesn't stop oh, you're jumping ahead. ahead you're go jumping ahead. ahead I mean he does but not yet no <laughs> I I liked it honestly this I didn't love it like it made me I didn't want to read about her menstrual cycle but it didn't bother me as much as the tonic uh-huh. um no but to me it was so genius that Sarah added this in specifically for a lead because this is so something that would happen to a lead like Mm -hmm. the worst stuff happens to her all the time the timing of everything that happens to her sucks the stuff that happens to her sucks nothing goes right in this girl's life and this was like the cherry on top of everything for me i thought it was genius writing truthfully um They stop at an inn to get supplies and new clothes. However, the innkeeper sells a lead out to her uncle Vernon, locking her in a room with him and the Ilkin. Vernon tells a lead that he and the Ilkin will take her back to Morath. A lead tries to claim that Lorcan is her husband, arguing that Vernon is no longer in charge of her. However, Vernon sees through the deception because he know, knows who Lorcan is. He also tries to tell her that Lorcan took the boat and left her behind and claims that Manon is dead. The Ilkin begin to drag her to a box designed to hold her during the journey to Morath. As she oh. grabs, I know, as she, dra- again, what I'm t- the, literally the worst things happened to her. I can't. Yeah. Like, as she grabs a dagger on Vernon's hip, Lorcan's, Lorcan throws a hatchet at her wrist to stop her from plunging it into her chest. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, I feel so much for her. As Lorcan fights the Ilkin, Alid grabs the hatchet and depac- depacitates. <laughs> she decapitates. <laughs> she. De- what is the thing Michael Scott says? His kappa was detated. <laughs> Don't remember that line. Um, mm-hmm. But she kappa detated one of them. And another Ilkin takes Vernon and flies away. Alid and Lorcan fight the rest of them, and Lorcan carries Alid to safely- safety. When they get back to the boat, Lorcan promises to remain with Alid to protect her. He asks her about the stone that Caltaine gave her and explains what the word keys and word gates are. Alid falls asleep, and when she wakes up, Lorcan has cut his clean shirt into strips for her to use for her period. <laughs> so I, Sweet. that was 
it was coming. It just hadn't quite happened yet. But I honestly thought that was even sweeter, like for her to just wake up to it. Like <laughs> also not to get like, working. don't get graphic, don't get graphic. But <laughs> how do you use a shirt? I assume she's wearing a dress. Like, well, she has underwear, probably like a pad. But how do you get it to stay? You fold it. I don't know. You just... She has underwear. Okay. <laughs> Undergarments. I feel like their undergarments were always those like really baggy pants. Here's the thing. It's not explained. S- just like how tonics don't need to be explained. It just <laughs> happens. It just is. <laughs> it just okay. is. Take me to chapter 51. I will. Ayland and Rowan use their magic to extinguish as much of the fire in Eowe as they can. Their effort drains Aelin magically and emotionally. She tells him that she's not using a birth control. Here it is. She's not <laughs> using. You're kidding a- me. <laughs> what in the world? I could a- not have planned that. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, Again, like this whole conversation. She's not using a birth control tonic and reasoning that because she is still not pregnant, she may have inherited the Fey difficulty with fertility. Manana company. And I'm just again. I'm just like this whole conversation is so pointless it is so stupid i but whatever monona companies i didn't i just i liked it it because it gave me the the like insight that she isn't against getting pregnant and i thought that was sweet i you know what give me that insight in a different conversation because it (laughs) that's not the only way that can be written in like if that was the ultimate goal of what we were trying to get out of this then I hated it. If the other only other reason was like I mentioned earlier, I'm I'm done. I'm not talking about this anymore. We spent way too much time. Yeah. Manon accompanies the group on their trip inland, but Aelin tells her to have a Braxos leave so as to not draw more attention. Manon says an emotional goodbye to Abraxos, telling him to return in four count them four days. She takes her croaking cloak and throws it into the ocean, distressed by the memory of killing her half-sister, and Aelin admits that she also still sees the faces of the people that she's killed. And that is where we're stopping for Empire of Storms. However, here's where we pick up in Tower of Dawn. Kale wow. now has movement. I know. That, Quite, I well, didn't, that was shift. a like, jump scare to me. I'm going to be honest. I forgot <laughs> that's where we're ending. Otherwise, I would have ended it a little differently. When you but said, then and that's where we're ending, I was like, oh, maybe she got tired. Like, maybe we're wrapping it up early today. I'll ask no. after the podcast. But <laughs> now I'm seeing what's happening. All right. To I just kale. forgot that's where we, I forgot that's where it ended for this. <laughs> and now we're just moving on to Tarot John really quick. Um, Kale has, now has movement up to his knees, but he still can't stand. Kale is at dinner with Irene, Hussar, and the other siblings when Hussar comments that Nezrin is due back the next day. <laughs> Kale reveals that Nezrin has sent a letter saying that they are staying in the mountains for another three weeks. Hussar says that Dorian and Aelin have both been spotted. Aelin was in Skull's Bay, just as Kale had said, oh. <laughs> and her spies saw her unleash her power on Morath ships. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall and watch his <laughs> reaction to that because he was trying to throw him off like lo and behold he gave them the most accurate information the one thing he's done right this whole time was on accident um hassar wants kale to swear on irene's life that aelin won't one day try to conquer conquer their continent too but he cannot do it Caution comes to Kale's room that night and reveals that they provided captain rolf with fire lances that they have had uh and that they've had a new order for more ship more to be shipped north good lord it's okay (laughs) thank you nezrin sartak and falcon go to three other watchtowers and find of nothing of importance the other rook riders show up at the last temple and a rider called yaren argues with them for a while and then leaves sartak reveals that yaren is borte's fiance i loved reading that because i loved how not even just a plot twist it was just like they hated each other so much and it was so funny for that to just like they're arguing and bickering whatever and then at, like at the end he's gone whatever and Sartak's like yeah they're engaged like believe it or not they actually yeah. like each other this is like a, this is law forever like this is i don't know i thought that was i, I just thought it was it. funny i love their dynamic i thought me they too were so awful at first and then i'm like wait okay i love it <laughs> but borte being engaged 
was not that on was my a, bingo card. It that sure was, was not. A twist for me. It was. But for realsies this time, that is where our episode is ending. I told you we just had two quick, quick chapters. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm so sorry for ranting about birth control tonics. But if you agree, please let me know because I feel like I'm alone now after my stance. And I don't know. I went way harder on that rant than I expected. But have a great rest of your week. Um, oh, you get weirdly <laughs> passionate about things. I do. I don't huh. know why the hills I choose to die on are so random, but here odd. we are. Very odd. So, all right. Well, bye guys. Um, catch yeah. us on bah, 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 Monday. Ooh, yes. this Monday yes. we're doing a really fun one. So we're popping back to Akatar for a second. We are doing an episode I like to call Mass Island with yes. none other than a guest star, Daniel Alexander, who is, if you don't know him, you got to hop on Instagram real quick and look him up because he is so freaking funny. So, um, and he so was funny. such a joy to have on our show. I'm certain he'll be back on because uh, we loved him. So yes. Also, I just want to do a warning. I know <laughs> our episodes are usually fairly clean um, yes. language wise. He is so funny. There is language on this episode, though. So if you listen around young ears, I just want to throw that out there. Keep in mind, listen to this one when you're alone. Don't not listen to it because the content is so funny. It's so but good. I, we dive into theories. Yeah. We dive into matches. We dive into yeah. mates and rarity. It's so juicy, guys. It's so and good. But we it are is all over the place. Yeah. yeah. We are all over the place because ADHD was rampant in this episode and it was amazing i loved it so much but yeah i just wanted to throw that out there be specifically because we do generally keep this really clean and so because of that i wanted to make a note but yep. um the content is not inappropriate it's just language so yep um there's that on that and yeah have a great week stay tuned listen to that one um there's spoilers for all of her all of sarah's series is on that one so if you haven't finished one of them come back to it once you have and yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Peace Bye. out. <laughs>